Hey folks, Ashley Little Things Industry.com. Here's a video just discussing some of the retentive features of a comp in preparation of a mandibular first molar. Disregard the second molar uh, in the, I'm just using that for contour. And we're discussing retentive features that can be placed into a complex amalgam. Of course, there are hundreds of different techniques, and these are just a few. I've talked to a number of folks, I've read a number of textbooks now, reviewed the literature, and it's still, even though we think it's science, it still comes down to experience and opinion and what you've been taught, it appears. So we have some pins. They're very controversial. I place them just for experience. I mean, they are. there is no literature that shows uh, the cause failure, but the main concern of most clinicians is devitalizing teeth. So we're going to assume that this tooth is still vital and the patient can't afford a full coverage restoration, i.e. a crown, and we're just placing an amalgam. So we have, I placed some slots like Dr. K, so I'd mentioned, just taking a 169 or 699 burr, about 0.5 millimeters in depth into the dentin, and then slowly feathering coronally, just to place like a little dovetail in there. Similarly, I placed one here, very subtle. You should be able to take your probe, he said, and place it in there and have a little click. This is an amalgam pin, or also a cleat. There's a literature article that I placed there that shows uh, retention when it's about approximately 1.5 to 2 millimeters deep and a 1 millimeter in diameter. And this is more of a cleat. We have vertical pins that are 0.5 millimeters in from the dentin enamel junction. We have some microscope footage of placement and you can see the exact location. And also these horizontal pins. Now Burgess published an article discussing about horizontal pin placement and prevention of not only fracturing of cusp, but also in this case that the, the, the amalgam rotating lingually and fracturing off this portion with a pin. So you can also place some grooves, a whole bunch of different retentive features that can be placed. We're going to place amalgam bonds. We'll be bonding this in, a, in as well just to cover that uh, uh, the complex amalgam preparation. A lot of the opinions that I talked to would remove these two cusps, these buckle cusps, and based on your, it really depends on your occlusion, that's a large factor. And we're going to assume a, just a, a regular class one molar occlusion. But if the occlusion, like Dr. K mentioned, will also determine whether or not you reduce these or not. And other folks would just reduce them. If you didn't have an opposing tooth or a very light contact or just, say, a marginal ridge contact, you may not need to reduce this, these cusps. Every clinical situation is different. You can see some incipient caries here. There's, it's non-cavitated, so the literature is fairly solid on uh, not having to prepare that. Just placing some fluoride varnish to remineralize it. So it's fairly opinion-driven. This is the placement of this is also opinion-driven. Another thing uh, to note that Dr. Dre had mentioned is that you can, and on the radiograph you'll be able to see uh, there was some tertiary dentin formed so there's going to be, it's the pulp will be, um, there'll be a thicker amount of dentin between the pulp and this margin here and the surface of the, or the dentin so maybe a little more protection when you go to place that, uh, the pin rather than perfing into the pulp horn, it, there is no pulp horn. So that's another uh, key point and then just restoring back to ensuring you have the right correct amount of reduction not only for your cuss that you shoot but also your pin placement so again this is just a complex amalgam restoration we're going to start now filling it and using some of the tips and hints that I've learned from some of the mentors and other residents so stay tuned cheers